Hello everybody, this is Steve Yoder. Welcome to week 13, our second to the last week of Legal Studies 246, the legal environment of business, here in the summer of 2017 at the UAB Collat School of Business. This week we are moving on to two new topics. First topic will be environmental protection, and the other topic is protecting something else, protecting protecting competition. Here are the uh, items in the learning module for this week. As you can see, there is a set of learning activities for chapter 18 on environmental law and a set of learning activities for the next chapter on antitrust law, which is another name for the laws that protect competition. Looking first at environmental protection, we have a set of PowerPoint slides, of course. We have a set of narrated slides, and there are a couple of other short things in the learning module that might be on the last exam or might be on the short quiz that is set up for this topic. There are a great many things in the environment that can hurt us and our families, and we will be looking at all those things in the environment from the air to the ground. Environmental law is based on a common law set of rules. It's actually a subset of tort law called the law of nuisance, which is still available even in addition to all the specific statutory laws passed by legislatures to protect us if we are injured by some something in the environment. If it rises to the level of a nuisance, that might be something that we could use to sue whoever had put that pollution into the uh, atmosphere, into the environment. The federal government got serious about protecting the environment through laws starting in the 1970s, and today the things that you can see here are uh, regulated so that they don't hurt us. This is an actual picture of what a Birmingham afternoon would have looked like in North Birmingham as recently as the 1970s. The sky was an was a reddish brown. Today the Clean Air Act has cleaned up the air and that would not be possible today. Water is also sometimes polluted and we are protected against that by the Clean Water Act. A body of water that would be regulated would be the Warrior River right here near Birmingham, Alabama. Another environmental hazard that is regulated is hazardous waste. All of us see the trucks go by with the diamond emblems on it. Those diamond emblems, if you know what the code is, would tell you what nasty thing is inside that truck. And part of the regulation of hazardous waste is that the diamonds have to be there and that they have to be transported by whoever made the hazardous waste in a very safe manner. President Trump has signaled in a couple of ways that he does uh, not feel the same way about protecting the environment that President Obama felt. President Obama was very rigorous in trying to enforce the rules of uh, the Environmental Protection Agency. President Trump, just uh, a day before I'm recording this on Friday the 20th of July, announced that he was going to strip away key provisions of regulations that uh, protect endangered species. Moving on to antitrust law, or the law that protects competition. Again, we have some PowerPoint slides and we have some narrated uh, slides and a couple of other short things to read or watch. How would things be different if we did not have laws that protected competition? We looked at how our lives, thought about how our lives might be different if there were no laws protecting us against environmental hazards. What about the laws that help protect competition? What if there were only one brand of flat screen TV, only one bank, only one brand of aspirin? How do you think the world would be different? The granddaddy of antitrust laws is the Sherman Antitrust Act, passed now over 125 years ago. By today's standards, it is a very brief law, but it is still very much the centerpiece of protecting competition. The Sherman Act, passed in 1890, 
Section 1 of that said that there cannot be horizontal restraints, such as agreements among competitors to fix prices. Here's an example of exactly that happening for LG, uh, excuse me, for liquid crystal displays. An LG display, a big maker of flat screen TVs, using those displays was fined a great deal of money for having tried to conspire with competitors to keep those prices high. Here's another example, Bumblebee Tuna agreed to plead guilty in setting prices for tuna uh, in May of 2017. Another thing that is prohibited by the Sherman Antitrust Act is acting alone to negatively affect competition. Uh, conspiring as someone else is illegal under Section 1. Section 2 says you can't try to do that by yourself as a monopolist. That's what Microsoft was accused of in the early 2000s. Some of you are probably old enough, many of you are probably not old enough to remember that Microsoft used to make it possible only for Internet Explorer to be your browser if you use the Windows operating system. That was found to be uh, the, acts, the act, an act of a monopolist, and today obviously is not uh, the case. Here is an example from just two days uh, ago uh, here uh, in July of 2018, the European Union has fined Google for uh, being a monopolist, basically, for uh, making it uh, uh, difficult for uh, anyone to use anything other than Google products uh, on its Android devices. Another law was passed several years after the Sherman Act that uh, gets at things that will reduce competition, such as merging with a competitor. We had a whole slew of airline mergers that were allowed, but uh, lo and behold, under the Obama administration, uh, a merger w between U.S. Air and American was held up further. It eventually was allowed, but it was held up, and um, the two companies were forced to sell off uh, some assets like gates to competitors to make it less harmful to competition. Here's an extra credit, uh, ex extra credit opportunity for you by Sunday night, August 5, 2018. Tell me the result of the court case in which um, the court decided whether AT&T should be allowed to buy Time Warner. Two points, you have to send me a Canvas mail message. President Trump uh, had a view on this as well, but uh, you just tell me whether you think uh, or whether uh, the result was to allow or not allow that merger to take place. Finally, here's the Canvas calendar. Uh, you can see that we have our employment discrimination quiz due on August 5, 2018, at 11.59 p.m., but everything else in this course is due on Friday night, August 10 at 11.59. All the quizzes and importantly, the second, excuse me, importantly, the third 